Welcome back to the flower farm on this very misty but beautiful morning. This week I spent some time in one of my favourite places on earth and that's the forest. I just absolutely love it. It makes me feel alive and it's so peaceful. And the really interesting thing about here is we've got the natural Australian bush with the gum trees and then this sharp transition into the pine forest. And I just love it. I feel very, very blessed to call this my backyard. And very, very blessed to call this cute little town home. is a gorgeous day and I'm tossing up what job I'll do we've done a few jobs off camera I'll quickly take you around and show you what I've done I've got my tea I'm obsessed with tea and I wondered too do you like to know what people are drinking because I've got dandelion and I'm obsessed with it and I love it I don't do any sweeteners or anything it's just the dandelion tea with it's dandelion root tea um, and I put a little bit of almond milk in it I almost always put milk in my tea maybe that's the british <laughs> ancestry i don't know so let me show you what we've been working on while you've been gone moroni has come out and he's rotary hoed this next section of garden bed for me because if you were watching probably like this time last year we did this section and my plan was always to extend it out and put a big trellis across here because as you drive up the driveway and see our house, it is the ugliest side of our house that you see first and I wanna try and hide it. So as you come up the driveway, this is what you see. And we do plan to enclose this, we just haven't got to it, the pump and the hot water. There's a fairly ugly tank. I just wanna get a trellis up here that as you come down, you just don't notice it and you look forward to over here. Work in progress. I'll take you down to another project. Okay, this is very junky. It's always got to get worse before it gets better, but there's a whole plan for here. But we couldn't move forward on the plan because this tree here had a branch that was coming right down low and out. I'll try and show you on the side. This branch was kind of coming out like this and it was at risk of splitting off and falling. So anything we put here, uh, you can see where it, where it was cut down and it fell. We didn't want to start projects here and then it falls on it and ruins it. This, I think you saw, we've started pulling this out. Moroni's started rotary hoeing it. We're just going to chop it up as much as we can, smooth it out and get this piece of lawn at the front of our, at the back of our house, back to just lawn. Final project I worked on is I actually did a little bit of work inside, mapping out plans for the farm. Uh, just trying to get in my head where things are going to go and what we need to get in. I've got one more bed to sort of dig out and get ready. I'll show you that. We're calling that the lilac bed. So this area here, I want to do a bed that sort of comes out and around and goes back into that back fence post. And then that will be another perennial garden with the lilacs. I've got some smoke bush that will go up the back. There's another lilac in over the back. And then there's a lilac here. And... In the future, I'd like to put some peonies in here. Before I get into doing rows of perennials out in the field, I want to get the house gardens set up with perennials that I can use as cut flowers. And it'll be a little bit like, you know how Danielle on North Lawn Flower Farm or North Lawn Flowers, she's on YouTube, has her garden. And I just love it so much. I love that her cut flower garden is her landscape garden of her yard. I think it's beautiful. So that's where... 
the inspiration came from. Mine will look very different. I've got a much, much larger space, so I'll have more open areas with grass and things like that. But yeah, that's where we're at. <laughs> the thing I think I might do, which has got nothing to do with anything I've just shown you, is I need to move the shade tunnel out into the flower field. Slight hiccup. Where and I planted lilies back here. I don't know what it is. It's something, but it's not frost sensitive, apparently. Behind the tunnel, I want to put a wall with like a sink to wash things in and then have the compost bins behind that. But I'm going to have to work around this um, random bed until I can pull these out, which I'm guessing I can't pull out until summer. So here's the new plan that isn't too bad from the old plan. Just trying to think. So the entry of the tunnel will come out here. Do we like the view? No, we don't. It would be much better here, which I could do. So this would be the view. That would be much better. Oh, now I don't know what to do. Unless I move it all the way over and then this is the view. And I feel like that's just nothing. Oh, what should I do? I don't mind flower farming alone. Like I kind of like the peace and quiet of it. Actually, I love it. The thing I don't like is you've got no one to bounce ideas off. And do I have a friend who would care? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, do I have a friend that would actually get my vision and care that it looks pretty? I don't think I do. Why don't I just clean this up and then go and have a shower and the idea will come to me. Okay. We've got such a wide space, like it's so much room. It's hard to plan because there are no constraints. Whereas I feel like a smaller, tighter space where you've got permanent things that you've got to work around is a bit easier because you've got some limitations, whereas we've got no limitations. We're gonna get one of the frames for the shade tunnel, carry it out to the field, put it in place and just see how it looks to give us an idea.
So I sat down yesterday when I went inside and I looked at my drawing of the farm and I've had some thoughts. This is the plan on paper and I really want it to look nice because I want to use it for photo shoots as well. So the plan is to be able to look down this aisle and see a really nice tool shed down the back here. Um, shade tunnel here and we've just checked it, it sits back fairly far so you don't it's not going to get in the way of pictures looking down at the tool shed but I could also grow some bushes or something here to soften the corner of it which would make that look nice I was going to put arches across there that's actually a pretty wide there's two and a half meters wide it might be a bit wide but now I'm wondering do I do them across the because I'm putting another raspberry row in do I put the arches across the raspberry row, grow climbing roses and they'll grow together? Like I'll have something of interest in there most of the year. And then behind the shade tunnel have the washing, like a sink to wash things and then some compost bins. So I can just, you know, as I take tops off carrots and things and clean up veggies and strip flowers and whatever, I can just throw it straight into the compost. So that's where I'm going. And I think it's going to work just fine. And Marona had a really good point that a shade tunnel is something that you would find in a garden. It's not an unusual thing to see sitting in a garden. So why am I worrying about it? So I think in terms of looks, I'm on track. I just need to get this done now <laughs> and I'm procrastinating because I need to flatten out that ground and then lay out the weed mat and then get some help to move the tunnels. So if we can achieve that today, I will feel like, I feel like I'm on fire. And then I'll get the other tunnel here and then probably just let the grass grow over that section there. Or cut this back and put the, how I want to do the little patio thing. Maybe that could go here. It feels good to get it done. So what I think I'll do now is do a tidy up and then go inside and sit with my daughter who's homesick and just spend a bit of time with her before the end of the day. See you next week. Mm -hmm.